Go this way. Hello. Let's go this way.
<laughs> Don't close that thing on him, man. Don't not close that, man. Don't close it, man. Don't close it. Don't close it. Don't close it. Don't close it. Please don't close it. Please don't. Blessings to all of you, certainly to the Tucker family, to all of our well wishes to all of our Jerusalem United Holy Church family. Thank you so much for coming to share in the, uh, as we celebrate the life of our brother Donald Tucker and to the, and to the family. Certainly we are praying for you as uh, the days go by from this point on. I know it's really hot outside, so we do not plan to belabor the time. Certainly want to thank all of those uh, who are, of course, our morticians who took care of uh, this fine young man. At this time, what we're going to do, we're going to have the sacred uh, reading of the scriptures by our Reverend Mary Thomas, and after which we're going to have the prayer of hope by our Reverend George Gunn. And I will be back to give you a brief selection and the word of comfort. Bless you. First, I honor my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's first in my life. I give honor to Pastor Jackson, to any of the ministers that's in the presence on today. I just thank God. I just want to have a few words before I read the scripture because Tuck was a friend of mine. I love Tuck. He's a, I think he's been a good father, good brother, good uncle and a good friend and I think he's resting in the arms of God couldn't know better scripture couldn't know better scripture been chosen than 2 Timothy 4 6 through 8 for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all of them, all of them, also, that love his appearing. The word of God has already been blessed. Bless you, family. Protocol having been established, let us go to the Lord in prayer. 
Lord, we stand here as empty pitchers waiting to be filled from on high. Send it on down, Lord. Send the Holy Ghost on down. We ask, oh God, you said you go away to prepare a place for us, but you wouldn't leave us comfortless. We ask that you would send the Spirit, who is the comforter. Mm -hmm. Let him comfort this family like only he can. Many of us have sit where they sitting, and we know, God, that because of your Spirit that we, we survived, and we're, uh, we're waiting to hear a word. We ask, oh God, that you would bless this preacher, mm -hmm. bless this vessel of plate. Give her a word, God, that would touch somebody's heart, that would cause somebody to cry out, what must I do? to be saved. We know that this death angel will come again. And we ask, oh God, that you would move on us. Make us better, Lord. Put us in your potter's house. Make and mold us into what you would have us to be. And when it's all over, when we can't live this life anymore, we want to hear you say, well done. Well done. We want to hear you say, well done, Lord. Well Touch, done. heal, and deliver. We ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 When tomorrow starts, when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. The angel said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But when I walked through heaven's gate, I felt so much at home when God looked down, smiled at me, and told me, welcome home. He said, this is eternity. So when tomorrow starts without me, do not think we're apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart. Amen. Amen. Certainly, we thank God for those encouraging words. And you know, uh, quickly, and I'm going to give you the song, um, and of course, I want to recognize, please let me recognize our elder, Linda Cohen, who is the First Lady of the United Holy Churches of America here present, and of course, all of the pastors and ministers that are here as well. But there was a song that uh, the family requested, and I'm going to sing a little bit of that, because when I sing it, I get excited about it. Okay. All right, Pam. The song says, when the gates swing open, I'm going to walk on okay. you, right? And perhaps this is what my brother said. Through the years, I keep on toiling. Lord, I kept toiling. Storm and rain, watching and patiently waiting until my Savior is coming again. Hide, hide me down in your love. Oh, yeah. And, and write, write my name. Yes, Lord. Write my name above. Yes, yes. And when, when the gates swing open, I, I want to walk in. Can I hear him saying this? Right. Teach me, Teach me Lord. how to love my enemy. Yes. <coughs> Lord, Lord, teach me. Oh yes, teach me, Lord. How to truly embrace my friends. Fill me, fill me, fill me with your goodness. Yes. Lord. And keep me humble. Humble until then. Yes. Hide, hide me deep in your love. Happy Lord. And, and write, write my name, write my name above, and when, when the gates swing open, I, I want to walk in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Had some fun with my brother, I called him my breakfast buddy. 
Sometimes I would go out and want to get a little meal and I would run into him and his sons and they shared with me and I would share with them and so we're grateful, grateful for his humility and his respect that he showed to his leader. Amen. Quickly let me read this a letter from our church to the family and I will give you the message. Amen. To the members of the Tucker and Hooper families, it is, it is with much sadness that today we are here to acknowledge the passing of Brother Donald Edward Tucker Sr. On June the 27, 2004, Brother Tucker and his son Lamont joined their sister and aunt, Deaconess Barbara Hooper, as members of the Jerusalem United Holy Church family. To them, along with his other children, grandchildren, brother, and all family members and friends, we are deeply sorry for your loss. He has fought he has fought through his illness and is now released from suffering and pain. He has taken a journey we all must take one day. As those we love transition, we are reminded that our days are numbered here on earth. No one knows when it will be our time to take that final step. Therefore, it is important that we live our lives so that we can meet our Savior in peace one day. First Thessalonians 4.14 states, for if we believe that Jesus died and arose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. We hope that the prayers we are praying will in, will in some way comfort and strengthen you. We further pray that the memories you all have shared through the years will remain, remind you of all the good times that will keep Tuck, uh, as he was fondly called, alive in your hearts. In his care, Jerusalem United Holy Church of America, Elder Mary Jackson, pastor. Just wanted to talk quickly uh, from an area of text out of the book of Job. I shall read just a few verses in your hearing, verses 23 through verses 27. And the word of the Lord will eat. Oh, that my words were, not, were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. That they were graven with an iron pen and lead into the rock forever or led in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. He's, this, is, this is it. This is the scripture. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Yeah and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. All right. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not another. Though my reins be consumed within me. I want to talk from this subject, hope in the midst of despair. Let me just encourage all of us that no one really knows um, really the true essence of suffering unless you understand the dynamics of the sufferer, the person who is really going through. And so when we are going through something, our perception, our perception of how we see ourselves in the situation makes all the difference in the world as to how we ultimately are able to focus on the end of our situation. Amen? And so what I'm saying is that it is important for us to have the right perception while we're going through. Now there are challenges, and I know there were challenges for him, and there were challenges for Job, For many of us have read the scriptures, and we understand the dynamics of what Job had to go through. But isn't it interesting, right here in the text, if you read the verse before and get to this text, although everybody had brought sad news and was, was saying sad things, his friends were saying thing, sad things, his wife told him he was foolish, all of these things he had to deal with all of a sudden, right here in this 20, 23rd verse, he starts to say, I really wish people understood who I was and how I feel and what I'm really trying to tell you yes. is what I'm trying to tell yeah. you. And so he said, I wish that I could write it in a book and it 
that would be written for years to come. Well, guess what? He has written it through his life, and now he's saying that, listen, I suffered, I understand this, but I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you I grabbed hold to hope. So the Bible says that Job had to find a place in him, no matter what was going on around him, to be able to see his hope in Christ. So here's what he does. Although then you didn't have the scriptures, the holy writ, you might have had the scrolls because it was written many, many years ago. And so what he does, he digs down into hope because remember he was a servant of the Lord. And when you're a servant of the Lord, you know how to reach out when nothing else helps. When nothing else helps, you know how to reach to the Lord. Anyway, I hope you know how to reach out Amen. to the Lord. Amen. Because in times like these, you better know the Lord. I think we all need to know the Lord. And so therefore he reaches all the way down on the inside of him and there was hope. And so therefore he had to dispel all the things that were said to him, all the feelings that he had, all the pain that he had, all the suffering that he was dealing with. And he began to make the testimony and speak in a prophetic way. He said, for I know. For I know. How do I know? Because I see. All right. I, ha I can see beyond where I am. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. I can see beyond my situation. Yes. I can see beyond my pain. Mm -hmm. I can see beyond my despair. I can see beyond it. Now I have the courage, in spite of what I'm feeling, to reach out and see that my Redeemer liveth. Amen. He liveth down through time. And guess what? He's coming back. Amen. He's coming back for every one of us. So there is hope. What is hope? Hope is 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 having that faith and that com uh, that confidence that when you are looking for something, you expect it with expectation. I believe that my brother, I believe that he had talked to the Lord, maybe when you didn't even know he was talking to the Lord. Amen. When he was praying to the Lord, he can't, he can't tell you all the prayers he prayed. He can't tell you all the conversations that he had with the Lord. But I believe, just from some of the conversations that we had, I believe he made it right with the Lord. Maybe you got something. I don't know. But I'm just saying, he found hope in the middle of despair. And I believe when I talked to one of his sons, he said, I'm ready to go. All right. I'm ready to go. And when they're ready to go and make peace with the Lord, just let them go on. Amen. All right. And I'm not trying to trivialize your pain or your suffering, but I'm just saying, hopefully in a few days you remember the love that you have and the love he had for you. That's right. The relationship you had, amen, with him and, and the relationship he had with you. That's and right. so let's not forget about that when we're living our lives and just living our lives any kind of way because we know that one of these days the Lord is going to come back for me. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just saying there's hope. And so hope is when you have that expectation, no matter what the despair is, that expectation that something is going to happen, you have to have an expected end. You have to look for something beyond this life. Amen. Amen. If, you don't, if you don't look for something beyond this life, I don't know what you have. Because there is much more beyond this life. And guess what? If he lived right and if you live right when the Lord calls you home, you get a chance to see him yourself That's again. Right. And he'll wave at you and say, hi, come on right. in. That's if you live right, amen. That's right. Ah, because the Bible says a man must be born again. Yes. He cannot enter into the kingdom. Flesh and blood is not going in. That's why he told you clean up flesh so that you can go in. Because when you drop off the robes of flesh, your spirit will be well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so therefore, I want to encourage this, your fam this family that there is hope in the midst of despair. Remember this in the days to come. Don't hold God accountable for this because he's coming for you and me too. And so let's remember that. I want you to be encouraged in the Lord and of course to his best friend and other friends. Certainly we want to encourage all of you and let the Lord continue to strengthen you and hold you together. Hope in the midst of despair. Right. We want you to be encouraged. Amen. Amen. I want you to walk upright. Amen. God bless God you and we thank you Good so word. much word. as we prepare. He has transitioned, and yes, so for as much it has pleased the Almighty in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, ensuring certain hope of the resurrection unto eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ at whose coming and glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth, and the sea shall give up their dead. The corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the mighty working, 
whereby he is able to subdue all things himself. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Amen. We're going to give you the benediction, and again, we pray your blessings. Please be safe. Father, we thank you again for you, this family. We pray that you would continue to mm. bless them, keep them strong, keep them together. But more than anything, let them know that there is hope in the midst of the despair they themselves are having. Continue to strengthen them, Master. And we thank you now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. We could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. To the only and all wise God be dominion, majesty, and power. Amen. 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 At this time, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank Pastor Jackson. We'd like to thank each and every one of you that have come out today to show your love and support to the family. We do ask that you will continue to pray for this family. And this do concludes our homegoing service for our beloved Dawn Edward Tucker. May his soul be at rest in peace. And family, may God be with you and keep you, and may we all go in peace. And again, thank each and every one of you for coming. God bless you. My soul was sinking in a world of sin, but grace and mercy. It took me in, took my feet out of the miry clay, and placed them on, on a rock to stay. Oh, what a relief it was, when God rescued me, mm -hmm. he loosed the chains that had me bound.
They get worried now. And they went on back that day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sunday morning. And they knew that that old man still wasn't sitting in the corner. Somebody began to ask questions about it. Should anybody see the old man? Look at here. Is anybody hurrying from the old man? A voice just came down from heaven way. I believe I'm gonna let daddy tell you what the voice said. By the time they recognized who voice it was, and everybody began to look up toward heaven, with. and that old man voice began to talk to. He said, "Cheer!" And one thing about this choir that I sing with now, he said, "We don't have to wait until Sunday morning." 